بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أن رجلا قال يا رسول الله ذهب مالي وسقم جسمي أو نبي الله بسبب أن قائد I've lost a great amount of wealth and I'm quite ill I'm sickly فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا خير في عبد لا يذهب ماله ولا يسقم جسمه There is no goodness in a person who does not go through situations where they will be lost financially or physically. In Allah, إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا إِبْتَلَاهُ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves somebody, He puts them into situations. وَإِذَا بْتَلَاهُ And when they are in that difficulty, that hardship, that trial, that tribulation, سَبَّرَهُ when their hearts are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the tawfiq and the opportunity to be patient so that's why our mashayikh explain that a person through these difficulties reaches stages when he is patient in these situations and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded Nabi alayhi salam فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَعُ الْعَذْمْ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ like how Anbiya Ali Musallatu Wassalam went through hardships and difficulties, you will also go through these hardships and difficulties. But the command of Allah at that time is to be patient and to go through that hardship, knowing that it is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and there is goodness for me in it. أول ما يدعى إلى الجنة الحام حما دون لله الذين يحمدون على السراء والضراء The virtues of those people who are patient that on the day of Qiyamah they will be the first people to be called to Jannat because they used to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good conditions and in bad conditions So when they was eased they remembered Allah and they obeyed Allah when there was difficulty they remembered Allah and they obeyed Allah. That's why in difficulties we need to be patient and one should have the yaqeen that the amount of calamities which Allah has protected me from is greater compared to the small insignificant difficulty and hardship that has reached me. Because we do not know what else could have come our way but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His infinite mercy has diverted those calamities from one. And if not from one, maybe from his business, from his family, from his children, etc. So you should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should look at the life of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and see how much hardship and difficulty Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam had undergone in this situation. Among the amal that a person should be particular about is when a person is sick, ill, in difficulties and hardship, then they should turn to amal specifically salah. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ Those people who turn to Allah, أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنِ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ That they will get peace, tranquility and a solution. Allah will give them a solution at that point in time. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا أَمَالِ الصَّالِحَ الصَّلَاةِ Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find a solution for His servant no matter what difficulties He's undergoing. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ no matter what difficulty, what illness, what pandemic a person is undergoing, we need to be patient and we need to turn to salah. Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. Allah's special mercy, help and assistance are those people who are patient. وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكِبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِينَ Nabi Ali Salaam also when addressing Bilal when the time of Salah used to come he should say Ya Bilal 
اقیم الصلاة ارحنا بها او بلال prepare for us comfort and solace so we find through salat it is a means of comfort and solace where sahaba arrows that had pierced their body were removed and they would not feel the effects of that injury when they were in salat and when the arrow was removed as Ali used to say that even on the night of Badr وَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُنَا وَمَا فِينَا إِلَّا نَائِمٌ on the eve just before the battle of Badr most of the Sahaba were exhausted and they were asleep except Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam I can remember him تحت شجرة يصلي ويبكي حتى أسبح that he performed the salah entire night and he cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until morning in the famous dua of Nabi alayhi salam where he made a decision between him and Allah for the ummah so salah is an opportunity where we make a decision between us and Allah Umay Salma Riyan Reis istiqad al-Nabi that layla one night Nabi alayhi salam got up and he said subhanallah madha unzil al-layla min al-fitan that praise to Allah, glory to Allah on this night a lot of fitan has been revealed, has been sent down and then he enjoined the Zawaj Mutahharat to engage in Salah Ibn Hajar Askalani Rahimallah explaining this says وَفِي الْحَدِيثِ اِسْتِحْبَابُ الْإِسْرَاءِ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ that from this hadith we come to know that no matter what fear, anxiety, problem, illness a person has, he should immediately resort to salah. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَةِ And then he quoted this ayah of the Qur'an. Other riwayat, إِذَا حَذَبَهُ أَمْرٌ فَزِعَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ when any serious matter came up, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam resorted to salah. That's why we, as a, as a speed dial, when a person in front of him keeps emergency numbers, when there's a fire, the number for the ambulance, 911, in every situation we know when there is a problem, we got to fail safe. For the people of Iman, they fail safe is Salah. To such an extent, وَأَمَرَ مَنْ رَعَى فِي مَنَامِهِ مَا يَكْرَهُ أَيُّ صَلِيَ That even if a peace person sees something which is thus light, a dream which is very frightening, etc., then we've been encouraged فَلْيُصَلِي Engage in Salah. So, our fail-safe, our first movement at any point in time should be towards Salah. And that was the habit of Sahaba as well. So at one point in time there was darkness in the era of Hazrat Anas radiallahu an. So the narrator says that فَأَتَيْتُ أَنَسًا فَقُولْتُ يَا أَبَا هَمْزَ I came to Anas radiallahu an and I said هَلْ كَانَ يُسِيبُكُمْ مِثْلِ هذا على أهد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Would this happen in a time of Nabi عليه السلام? And what was your people's reaction? Probably an eclipse. قال معاذ الله إن كانت الريح. Forget darkness and eclipses. Even if there was a severe wind in the era of Nabi عليه السلام والسلام. فَنُبَادِرُ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ We would, our fail safe was the musalla, the masjid. مَخَافَةَ الْقِيَامَةِ Even if it was qiyama and the fear of qiyama, our first option would be to turn to salah. So, إِذَا فَزِعْتُمْ مِنْ أُفُقْ مِنْ أَفَاقِ السَّمَاءِ فَفْزَوْا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ That when any matter happens, rush towards salah. 
hasten towards salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept a lot of barakah and blessing, blessing and unseen help which is not in our ilm, which is the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at any point, any need a person has, a need his first fail safe is an aspirin, is a desperin, is a panado. We've got our medicine cupboards stocked up our pharmacies. We've got backup plans in a situation. I've got this caliber, I've got this mal, I've got this. Different fail safes for different situations. Our point number one, point A should be to turn to Allah in Salah. And Sahaba were like that. Anas had an orchard and the person looking after it came to complain and he said that there's no water, how do I irrigate the land? So he said, Fata'a bima'in, bring a lota, bring water. Fail safe number one. Fata'wadda'a wa salla, he made wudu and he read salah. And he asked, Hal tara shay'an? He asked his khadim, go and see, do you see anything? He said, Ma ara shay'an? So again, Fadakhala fasalla, read salat again. Ask again, have you seen anything? Qala ma ara shay'an, third time. Fasalla, read salah. Hal tara shay'an? Have you, can you witness anything? Ma ara shay'an? Then he said, Ara mithla janahi tayri min as sahab. Like the wings of a bird, I see clouds. Fajala yusalli wa yad'u hatta dakhla. And he continued reading salah until it started raining. And he told him that mount your horse and see. How far the rain has descended. فَانْذُرْ أَيْنَ بَلْغَ الْمَطَرُ فَنَذْرَ فَإِذَا الْمَطَرُ لَمْ يُجَاوِزْ As the servant went to go inspect, he found that it not surpassed the orchard. So amal is so powerful, it can make rain descend onto the earth, it can make Shifa descend on a person. Ali radiallahu anhu went and he complained to Nabi alayhi salam. He mentioned to him, Waj'atu waj'an. I was very, very ill. I came to Nabi alayhi salam. So he placed me close to him. Waqama yusalli. And he started performing salat. Then Nabi alayhi salam addressed me. Bari'ata yabna abi talib. فَلَا بَأْسَ عَلَيْكَ Oh Ali, have you seen any benefit now? Have you seen any benefit now? So Azad Ali رضي الله عنه narrates himself فَقُمْتُ فَكَأَنِّي مَشْتَكَيْتُ I stood up from that position and whatever sickness I had it's as if I didn't have any illness whatsoever. So part of salah is firstly we make wudu and wudu cleanses the mouth from microbial cultures, from different different bacteria. Likewise the nostrils are cleansed, a person clears their throat, all infections which normally diseases which starts circulating comes from the nostrils and the mouth which slowly slowly go into the stomach and it causes infection. These microorganisms which are in the saliva eventually reach the stomach, infect the bloodstream and diseases can spread through that. Likewise a person washes the different parts of their body, all the germs which are on the skin on the surface area is cleansed as well. Then the effects and the harms externally, which water itself and researchers from different colleges abroad have shown that this water here, which is sprinkled on the different body parts, they create ions and positive ions which 
relax the nerves, the muscles, it rids the body of high blood pressure, muscle pains, anxiety, and multifold benefits. And the cleansing itself, if you look at it, just general illnesses globally, more than 30 million people are affected, uh, 600 million by stomach problems, 30 million typhoid, 250 million dysentery, 7 million cholera, 5 million hepatitis, like there's many, many illnesses and sicknesses. A person who is habitual of making wudu, so before Salat we make wudu, there are many benefits which only Allah and His Rasul know scientifically, there is data and there is research, but that is in the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in Salah they have listed a lot of benefits, it reduces the heart rate, cardio-respiratory synchronization, it alters and balances the levels of melatonin and serotonin, it uh, boosts the immune system, it reduces stress, reduces anxiety, uh, depression, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, it, uh, it strengthens the heart, reduces heart disease, cardiac failure, Parkinson's disease, and even up to cancer. This is the research from the worldly people, but in the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the benefit which scientists have not found to date, only Allah knows. There was a person from Saudi Arabia, and his father was a great sheikh who taught Quran, he was an ustad. This person grew up, but he was not religious. He never went to the masjid, he never used to read Quran. And he met up in an accident and he became paralyzed, he could not walk. So the bottom half of his body was paralyzed. So one day it so happened that he was in a wheelchair and he was traveling somewhere, he was completely hand handicapped. And he heard the adhan and it had the adhan touched him. And it was as if, he says, I, it was the, as if the first time in my life I'm hearing the adhan and I fell into tears and I asked my brother, it was is it possible that I go to the masjid? So he said, we'll make a plan. And as he went to the masjid and he performed that salat, he was deeply affected and he made a niyat that he will read salat his entire life. It was very difficult because he was in the wheelchair, but arrangements were made. And he said, then I started reading Salah and one day at the time of Seri, I seen my father in a dream. He came out of the grave, he patted me on the shoulder. He was in tears and he said, oh my son, do not grieve for Allah has forgiven me because of you. And when I woke up from that dream, I was very happy and I fell into sajda. And he said, years went by like that and I was praying Prophet Salah at that time. And the Imam started reading ayat of the Quran and he was moved and then he made the dua of Qunut and tears overwhelmed him and his body started shaking and trembling and he thought so he was going to die. But as the Imam ended, he became more calm and after he made salam, he said he felt a feeling on his body that he never felt before. And he felt movement on his legs. And he felt that movement, he started trying to move his legs. And he actually could move his feet. And as he stood up and slowly, slowly he found movement and he could stand. And the people around him started gathering around him and congratulating him. And he could not believe that that had happened to him. So the Imam came to him and seen this and whispered in his ears that beware, be very wary and don't forget the mercy of Allah on you and don't ever think of disobeying Allah, you rather go back to the wheelchair, you rather go back to the wheelchair and stay your entire life like that than disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us the reality of salah, whoever gets up at night and reads the third kalima and fourth kalima and says, Allahumma gfilli, oh Allah forgive me, oh da'a, and he makes dua, 
then Allah will make his maghfirat and his dua will be accepted. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ